Let me move on to our quick fire questions. We get we asked folks uh, earlier in the week, told them that you would be on this week and asked them to send in their questions. You can do that if you're listening. You can do that via Instagram or um, via Twitter at Politicon. Um, and or you can send them, send us your questions via email podcasts at politicon.com. Um, these were specifically for you, Carter. Joyce from LA asks, should Snowden, Assange, and reality winner be pardoned? I'm I'm open to consideration of those ideas. I certainly uh, you know, I think there's there's um, there and this is a recent uh, Ninth Circuit a decision that the activities which were uncovered in terms of the the Snowden leaks, I mean, these are illegal things that were being done, right? So in that sense, it's it's a positive. But I'm 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 not I'm not well positioned. Again, I think it's important, similar to what we were debating, it's better to have the full picture. And I'm not I'm not fully versed on it, but I'm I would certainly be open to consideration of those concepts. Um, Hannah from Richmond asks, is any agency or branch of government trustworthy? Uh, There's a great quote by Reagan, trust but verify, right? And I think what what has been a challenge for the U.S. intelligence community is a lack of openness. And actually, this goes back to the Snowden question as well, right? Because he he took pretty proactive steps and admit... uh, without question, broke the law related to that. But, you know, I think it's it's important uh, to to have trust, but it, trust is something you have to earn. And uh, unfortunately, through a lot of abuses, there, there are some major problems that uh, have not been fully addressed. And so I, I think it's, it's always good to have a uh, healthy level of skepticism and ask the right questions. And it's that's a great example of a good question. So appreciate it. Okay. Riley from New York. What's something Americans misunderstand about Russia? I, th- I think overall, it's, it, that's a good summary question in conclusion of, of what we've been talking about. I think there are countless misunderstandings. And I, I think, I mean, there it's the old, uh, like the old sting song, do the Russians love their children too, right? I mean, it's, um, I think it's important to look at people as human beings and to constantly have a uh, closed-minded rhetoric is is a serious problem. So I think it's important to understand and to have a, a fuller, deeper picture of the country, their culture, their economy, and their people, which I think is uh, not not uh, well understood by by anyone. And I, you know, I would encourage uh, the the questioner to actually go visit over there because I think you you can well, learn me, a lot. Let me change. Let me change Riley's question. Sorry, Riley, because um, I want to change it a little bit because I. I agree with you. And I honestly think most Americans, or I would hope most Americans would agree with you that, that we should, we should have respect for the human beings who live in Russia and recognize that they love their children too. Yes. So let me change the question because I'm curious. What's something mm-hmm. Americans misunderstand about Vladimir Putin? Because there's a difference between saying Russia and talking about Russians versus talking about the Kremlin and talking about Putin. And I don't know that there are many, I don't encounter many people in this country who are afraid of Russians, the people. (laughs) Um, But I do encounter quite a few folks as I speak who are very apprehensive about Vladimir Putin and his control over over that country and its government and its armed forces and its nuclear arsenal, et cetera. So let me ask you this. What's something Americans misunderstand about Vladimir Putin? I, I think, and let me let me be very clear and upfront about my where I'm. I lack knowledge. I, similar to uh, a lot of top leaders in the United States, I have actually never. Uh, I've never met Vladimir Putin at any time in my life. So you know, again, I think it's important to have a direct dialogue with individuals and keep an open mind. 
until you actually have that kind of engagement. Yeah. Well, I'll let you, I'll, I'll say yeah. trust, but verify on that Vladimir <laughs> Putin issue. And I got to say some of the stuff yeah. that I've seen happening or seen, or some of the reports that I've heard at least, um, certainly give me pause and make me concerned that while we aren't, we shouldn't be afraid of Russians and the people of Russia, that, that perhaps there are some things going on with Vladimir Putin and his leadership of that country that, um, and, and that his leadership towards interfering with our country <laughs> that may um, be cause for concern. But well, I, let me, I gotta, you know, let me, yeah, yeah, let me just push back a little bit, because I think this goes back to what we talked about with Iraq. Right, and this this is in the verification. Uh, I I think, and you know, the prior question about you know, trusting government agencies, etc. You know, not all the information, and I, I can say this without question from firsthand experience, not all the intelligence uh, is correct when it comes to these questions. So I think it's uh, you know, it, it requires a, a deeper level of thought and less of a uh, you know, jumping to conclusions, I would say. Hey, I'm Clay Aiken. To hear the full episode, subscribe to this Politicon podcast on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, or wherever you listen to pods. Please subscribe, rate, and review the show. Go to Politicon.com, follow at Politicon on social media, and listen to a new pod episode of How the Heck every Thursday.